Today, there have been marches in Berlin and in Dresden to demand freedom of speech and an end to Communist Party domination. In West Berlin, again, more than a million East Germans have spent the day in the West. West Berlin's traffic almost came to a standstill today in some areas as hundreds of thousands of people went Sunday driving to see for themselves many of the 22 crossings now open along the wall. Cars were bumper to bumper along the main road to the Brandenburg Gate where crowds of people gathered in a carnival-like mood in the shadow of the wall which is almost 10 feet thick at that point. It's built of reinforced concrete to withstand tanks and is still the only part of the Berlin Wall not to be breached. As East German soldiers patrolled along the top of the wall, T-shirt sellers were doing a brisk business on the West Berlin side. There are now many souvenir T-shirts available to mark the opening of the wall on the 9th of November, and overnight someone even changed the name of the street sign to commemorate that date, which is now firmly fixed in German history. In stark contrast to the crowds and colour in the West, the East Berlin side of the wall is stark and empty. The only movement young soldiers who arrive at regular intervals throughout the day and night for guard duty. But there are no guards here in the centre of West Berlin. On the Kofurstendam, the city's main shopping area, East Germans move freely along the streets. Although most of the major department stores were closed today, the smaller speciality shops and roadside stalls were open for business. At least one million East Germans came to West Berlin over the weekend, and another four million into West Germany. Top of the shopping lists were electrical goods, particularly cassette radios and players, tropical fruit like pineapples and bananas, and coffee. Most purchases were made with the 100 marks or 35 pounds welcome money given by the West German government to every East German on their first visit here. For many today was their only ever taste of the West. Tomorrow, it will be back to life as usual in a rapidly changing East Germany. Linda Dubely, Sky News, in West Berlin. In Czechoslovakia, up to 20,000 people have marched through Prague, calling for the leadership to resign. It's the third such demonstration over the weekend. There were brutal scenes at Friday's rally after police moved in. Early reports said one young man was beaten to death, but official reports deny any fatalities, and now a leading dissident has been arrested for allegedly fabricating the story. But the mystery has increased the widespread anger over police brutality and demands, too, for reform. Today's mystery follows the massive demonstration in Prague on Friday, the largest seen there in 20 years. Early reports from human rights activists said a 20-year-old student, Martin Schmidt, was killed there. Now there's confusion over whether anyone died. The authorities say Schmidt remains unhurt. Protesters say Friday's was a peaceful rally, demanding an end to Communist Party rule and more human rights. They marched to Wenceslas Square, but as they reached its centre, riot police moved in with dogs, truncheons and tear gas. Prague's main hospital dealt with up to 100 students injured in that attack, but the total of those hurt still isn't known. But it's the fate of Martin Schmidt which interests the world now. Activists say he was killed, beaten beyond recognition by police. The authorities say no one died. A second demonstration was held yesterday, this time protesting about the way police put down Friday's rally. Flowers and candles were left in Wenceslas Square, marking the bloodstains that remain. For these people, anyone killed could become a martyr to reform. For the government, the issue is a thorn in their side, especially in the light of today's demonstration. Well, joining us now on the line from Prague is our correspondent, Edward Lucas. Edward, can you tell us a bit more about today's protest? Today's dem demonstration was larger than yesterday, but not as large as Friday's. It was up to about 20,000 people. And it was completely peaceful. There were quite a lot of riot police around. They prevented the demonstrators crossing uh, the river and trying to get to Prague Castle, the seat of government and presidential palace, which some of them had wanted to go to. Um, but they didn't use force to stop them. They just formed a cordon. The, the demonstrators went back and ended up in Wenceslas Square, where they'd started, and gradually dwindled as the evening went on. And as I, when I was out there about an hour ago, uh, they were down to a few hundred people who were just standing around the statue of King Wenceslas, on which there was a great many candles burning and a lot of flowers laid around the base. There has been outrage about the police brutality during Friday's demonstration. Do you think now they're playing it very quietly? It must be clear to the authorities that having pictures of their police beating demonstrators with truncheons broadcast all around the world on television is not good for their image and doesn't help to solve Czechoslovakia's problems. On the other hand, 
they also face the danger that if they, they allow these daily demonstrations to continue, they may accelerate, and certainly um, yesterday's was a small demonstration, today's was bigger, and the demonstrators were chanting today, tomorrow it will be the whole of Prague, or everybody in Prague, and there does seem to be a, a feeling that with the student strike starting, because the students have gone on strike for a week and say they're going to um, boycott all classes and occupy buildings, and they've issued a man list of manifestos, and the actors have gone on strike, and most, of, most if not all of Prague's theatres are now shut, with the performances being replaced with what are in effect political rallies. The, opposition, the, the authorities are facing their most serious political test for 20, 20 years. No, no one can quite see what strategy they can use to deal with it. Can you clear up this confusion about whether a student was actually killed on Friday? No, I can't, and I don't think anybody else can either. The authorities have said that there are two students called Martin Schmidt and they're both, they're both alive. The students and the protesters either say, well, it doesn't matter whether he's dead or not because the authorities were, because the police were so brutal. Some say there is a student who's dead and the authorities are hushing it up. Others say the full story hasn't been told but just aren't clear what the circumstances are. The persistent reports of a student being brought into a hospital with doctors saying that he was dead. Uh, one quote I had was that the doctor had actually said he showed no signs of life, so it's possible a student was brought in, thought to be dead, and then recovered, which would certainly explain would be one explanation. But it seems that the, the, the students and the protesters have really sidestepped this. It did seem at lunchtime as though this was going to take the wind out of their sails, the authorities saying that basically most of the Western press and the dissidents had got it wrong in announcing the death. But people carried on wearing their black armbands and black, uh, black, black ribbons and just transferred their anger from the specific case of the, of the death or not death through to the general un unquestioned issue of the police brutality. Well, it obviously remains a confusing matter. We'll bring you what news we hear on Sky News. Thank you, Edward. That was Edward Lucas in Prague saying the Czech authorities are facing their most serious political test for 20 years.